So, everybody's been talking about the importance of physical media. And I have to agree with everybody that's talked about it, from Chris Stuckman to 3C Films, I think has touched upon it. I'm sure Doug Walker of Channel Awesome, James Wolfe of Cinemassacre. Everybody that watches movies, reviews movies, and whatnot, have all pretty much said that physical media is important. Now, people like Clownfish TV, they acknowledge that physical media is important too, but they've also come to realize that, yeah, physical media, you know, is not, you know, the, um, basically the alpha of formats right now. It's, you know, digital and streaming, but they're also acknowledging that physical media is kind of rising back up to that title of alpha of all the, you know, all, uh, you know of all the formats, if you will. But why is physical media so important? Well, I think probably the most substantial thing that people will talk about when mentioning this isn't just, you know, their memories of going to video stores like Blockbuster, you know, which was everywhere, or the local video stores, like for me in Hayward, it was Neighborhood Video as a kid, and growing up, before I moved out to Kansas, it was Ultimate Video. And the benefit about those places, about those video stores, was you would go in and you would have something like, let's say, Charlie Brown Christmas, like right there, where you could physically take it off the shelf, pick it up, look at it, and then behind it, you would see a case that contained said movie. And thus, you'd be able to grab that case, take it up to the counter, and rent it, and take it home. You know, and that always seemed to bring a smile to a lot of people's faces, because it's like, you know, you're going into this, one, you're going into this sanctuary, if you will, of, you know, magic, you know, where you can basically look at movies and such, and, and games and such, that you may not own, or not, may not be able to own, until later on when they go down in price, but for the time, for like three ninety nine, for three dollars ninety nine cents for the you know for all three nights of the weekend, or for five ninety for five dollars ninety nine cents for set the whole week, you can end up playing you know that game that NES game or that SNES game or that Sega game, or you could watch that movie or that show the volume that volume of the show that's on physical media you can watch it for as long as you want for those three days or seven days that you have it and that was a benefit that was a huge benefit for a lot of people because it's like again not everybody could go out and let's say buy you know a movie like Encanto if it came out at that time because it'd be too much and they had to watch the money so the best way they could do it is to rent it through a video store. Nowadays, of course, we have the streaming services like Disney Plus and Vudu, you know, and uh, Movies Anywhere and Prime Video, which are not, which, well, Vudu and Movies Anywhere and, you know, Google Play Movies and all that, they're all basically um, digital video services, not just streaming, but digital video services. Prime Video is a, is a hybrid of both. But anyway, anyway, though, you know, nowadays, you know, we have these amenities, like even Netflix, to where if we want to watch something, you know, pretty much it's going to be on a service, whether it's a paid service or a free service, free with ads, that is, uh, that we can watch. But if it's not, then that's where physical media comes in, because that's the only way you're going to be able to watch it. Like for me, one of the shows I grew up on as a kid was Jason the Wild Warriors. As far as I know, I don't think it's here on YouTube. As far as I know, it's not on Pluto TV or Tubin TV so, or anywhere else. So what's the best way for me to watch it? Basically take the physical media that I have, both volumes, the complete, which is the complete series, pop them into my 4K Blu-ray player and watch it like that. And, you know, again, that's a, that's a huge point. That's a huge you know, a plus for physical media because there are some movies and shows that are not on that are not on digital or streaming yet. You know, they're not. I mean, so, I mean, I'm not denying that sooner or later they won't be, but for right now they're not. And that you know, and that is basically a huge negative for streaming and digital media because if you want to prove that you're the next evolution of a home movie of home video of you know home video and everything to be consumed at the home or can be consumed wherever you go then basically 
basically you need to start accessing every title you can get your hands on. You need to license out every title you can get your hands on, put them on your service, and just go from there. Now, now with that said, there is another benefit to physical media um, as well, and I'm sure they've touched upon this, you know, when they've talked about it, that being people like Chris Stuckman and such, have touched upon this when they've talked about it. And that benefit basically is, let's say you have, like with me, you have a 4K television and you have a 4K Ultra Blu-ray player. You know, let's say you have, you know, both of these. You have a 4K television and you have a 4K Blu-ray player. So, you know, why, why is that so important when it comes to the importance of physical media? Well, real simple. Real simple. In fact, I'll, I'll show you down here. If I can get down here, for, for example. Um, I have movies down here, right? So I have some movies here. So let's say, like, let's say right here, here's Naratro, the last Naratro, the movie, right? I have that on DVD. I don't have it on Blu-ray, but I could. Eventually, I probably will. I have that on DVD. And my, I have a DVD player which I can play it on. With, but there's a, there's a problem. Apparently, it plays, but the sound don't come out. So, obviously, it's a connection with the 4K. Like, it doesn't, the 4K doesn't register it. But be that as it may, I have this. I have my 4K Blu-ray. Now, why is that important? Because of the fact that when I pop the DVD in, basically, the ray tracing, there's a little laser that does ray tracing on the disc, and it takes this 720p DVD and sends a signal to the 4K television that it's connected to. And the 4K television then, you know, you know gets that signal and then shows that picture, shows that movie, you know, from that DVD, you know, which is a 720p DVD. It shows it in 4K at 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Now, you might say, well, that's impossible. You know, it can't, you know, turn it into a 4K, you know, you know, picture. That's true, but what it's doing is it's up-converting it. It's an up-conversion. So, in other words, basically, it's not changing, you know, the disc physically to now be a 4K disc. No. You know, it's converting the signal to be a 4K signal. And it's basically taking the frames per second in either... You know, reducing in either reducing it or upping it. Most of the time it's upping it. So let's say, you know, the Naruto movie is 720p at 20 frames per uh, 24 frames per second. It's upping the frames to, let's say, 30 frames. Or if it's at 30 frames, it's upping it up to 60 frames. That's what it's doing. And you could see it. And especially if you have what's known as the uh, picture option, which is HDR. Which, let me see if I got, let me show you right here. Let me show you right here. Basically, if you have this option here, where you have your picture option, standard, natural, movie, and then high dynamic, high dynamic range, which is HDR, you know, the image will look even better. It will. For example, another example here is Sonic Sat AM. This is the unopened one. I have my opened one over here. It's right there on the bottom over there. And when I pop that into the um, four, into my 4K Ultra Blu-ray player, and you know, when I pop, I should say when I pop the disc in, and I choose an episode, like let's say I want to choose the Doomsday Project episode, the last episode of season two. You know, um, I'll you know I'll choose that, and the signal gets sent. The signal will get sent, and what I'll see is a, you know, what I'll see is a 4K version, you know, in 4x3, 4x3, a 4K version of, you know, of that episode, you know, of that episode. The catch is its standard dynamic range. It's not HDR, it's SDR, you know, standard dynamic range. But again, if you have the HDR option, the dynamic picture option, you know, like I showed you, then you basically will be able to use that converted 
signal, you know, you'll be able to use that converted signal you're getting along with that picture option to make the picture look good and crisp. And that's another benefit about physical media. The fact that basically compared to streaming and digital, you're able to get a crisper picture and a better sounding picture. Because again, you don't know what's going to happen if let's say you have an outage or you have to wait for a signal to buff. And that's why I think a lot of people look at physical media nowadays as being an important asset. You know, mostly when it comes to financial reasons, it's a, it's a straight up faster way of revenue and residuals. But to me, I have to agree with everybody here. Physical media needs to stay. It needs to remain where it's at. You know, we cannot, you know, just replace it, you know, as it is. We have to let it be and just, you know, go from there. You know, we just have to let it be and go from there. I mean, yeah, eventually physical media may not be here, ev you know, forever. Uh, but that's only going to be when streaming and digital basically gets their act together and starts, you know, uh, creating and starts, you know, developing, you know, pictures and images that are on par equal if not superior to what you would get from a you know you know what you would get picture quality wise from a physical disc you know so basically so basically i do agree now you know down the line physical media ain't going to be around forever but again i think the reason people want physical media to be you know a, you know be a standard still you know and be looked at as the best option to go with you know in the future you know, or at least from now on, or at least for the time being, is because of the fact that one, residual wise, the actors and the actresses, you know, get, you know, a quicker, you know, take, you know, of the pie, a quicker financial take of the pie, you know, they get that. And at the same time, you know, basically people get a better sounding uh, picture quality to go with, you know, to go with what they're watching. I mean, why do you think people, again, you know, watched Oppenheimer, bought the 4K version of Oppenheimer? Not just because people, you know, not just because it was being advertised as such, you know, to be watched in 4K, but because of the fact that they heard people talking about how great the picture was on the big screen, and they're like, man, I'd rather watch the 4K than watch the 1080p. And they did. And some people probably told them by getting early access to it, because, you know, there's that rule where basically the movie goes to digital first before anything else. I'm sure people are like, well, I don't want to watch it on digital if the 4K quality is not that good. I'm going to watch it on physical media. And again, that's why there's this push for physical media to stick around because people saw the difference or heard about the difference. You know, so physical media has its place. It does have its place. And I think a lot of people need to remember that. I think a lot of people need to remember that no matter how we feel about physical media and how much we feel that the more superior format is streaming and digital, we also have to remember that the picture quality may not be on par with physical media, you know, at all. And also, if we have classic shows and movies and stuff that are on DVD only at 720p or 480p, that basically 4K devices like a 4K Ultra Blu-ray player and a 4K TV connected can give you a quality of SDR, you know, at 4K 60 frames or 30 frames per second, but also, if you have an HDR, like dynamic picture range option, you can pretty much get something that's close to, let's say, 4K all the way through. But those are just my thoughts on why physical media is a big deal. I do apologize if I rambled and went off a little bit in other areas or, you know, and stuff. Um, I just got finished taking down the tree and everything here. So, uh, but let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Comment down below. Live chat during the premiere. I'd love to hear from each and every one of you on your take on the importance of physical media and such. Where do you think, you know, it ranks, you know, where do you think it ranks as far as importance goes? Do you still collect physical media? And do you think maybe that if we do see the end of physical media, it'll only be when streaming services and digital video services, you know, basically, you know, uh, evolve to the, or basically, you know, get to the point to where their picture and sound quality is on par with physical media. You know, let me know. You know, let me know down below and in the live chat during the premiere. Like the video. And until next time, guys, I will talk to you later. But yeah, give me your thoughts. Love to hear from each and every one of you. And I am out.